Good morning, friend. I'm up really early before anybody in the family is up. We are gonna head outside, do a large harvest this morning, and we're gonna do a full tour because I haven't done a good assessment of what's going on out in the garden in probably a week and a half because I've been doing food preservation projects. So I got my three baskets. I'm thinking I'm gonna get most of them full. For sure, I'm gonna get two full. And then I'm gonna bring out some envelopes and a pen because I think there's some seeds that are actually ready to be saved. So my goal this year is to try to save more seeds so that next year when I go to garden, I'm not having to purchase as many seeds. I mean, I'm still gonna buy a lot of seeds <laughs> probably for next year, but I, I kinda wanna try and push my skills by saving some seeds. So I'm just gonna grab some envelopes and a pen. I've got a bowl for a bunch of herbs and Let's see if we can get these three baskets full today. Gotta make sure I have my coffee out there too. Priorities. First things first, I thought I would show you how the fall garden is going so far. The broccoli rob is ready to go out into the ground. When I harvest the potatoes, I'm gonna plant these and this cauliflower out there. And we've got some green onions and more cauliflower. Or this might be cabbage, I'm not sure. We'll get this in the ground here coming up pretty soon. It's been in the hundreds for the last week. That's another reason why I haven't spent much time out in the garden recently, because it's been so hot. So I did lose some of my fall planting, but overall it's looking really good for my first attempt and just figuring out how to do it. The fall planting of the green stalk is looking really good. We have germination on each one of the tiers. And the cool thing is the nasturtiums kind of self-seeded themselves and there are little nasturtium plants starting all over. So we have lettuce and nasturtiums down here. These are carrots, more lettuce, nasturtiums, and cilantro. Radishes, these are seeds we saved more cilantro and beets. Like I mentioned, it's been in the hundreds and so I am definitely benefiting from getting up really early this morning. The chickens are up. It feels, it almost feels like a fall morning, which is kind of crazy to say. It's cool out here. It feels wonderful. So it's gonna be a great way to spend the morning with you. It is amazing what we are about to find in this garden <laughs> together. I am about to be blown away with the abundance that comes out of this garden. It's amazing what kind of a week of not harvesting that much can produce. The first bed I wanna start with is this one over here. This is where the tomatillos are. And I've got two different varieties of tomatillos. I started half of them and the other half were two that I bought from start because mine were looking a little stunted and they're definitely two different varieties. I want to grow next year just the variety that I purchased from the store, <laughs> and I don't know what this one is, but it grows way bigger tomatillos. We have a bumblebee taking a nap on one of the tomatillo flowers. Now this is the variety that I planted, and the tomatillos are just a lot smaller. They taste really good, they're just a lot smaller. So this is a fully ripe one, and it's really teeny tiny versus This is an even small one for the other variety. So I need to figure out which variety this one is. In front of the tomatillos, we have these sugar rush peach peppers, and these ones are starting to get ripe. So I'm gonna pick the ripe ones. If you want a pepper that does really well, in my experience, I've never had very good luck growing a lot of peppers, 
like bell peppers, but sugar rush peach peppers and cayenne peppers are two of the easiest peppers, this is cayenne right here, to grow. They're super prolific and they seem to be really hardy. My other really prolific pepper is a Chinese five color pepper, which we'll get to, but those three varieties of peppers, no, they're all hot peppers. So if you don't like hot, they probably aren't the ones you wanna grow, but out of my experience, I've always been able to get a really good harvest. Those are just the beginning of the sugar rush peach peppers. So now we've got green beans in this bed. The variety of green beans in this bed are contender. And contender aren't my favorite anymore. They used to be my favorite. My new favorite is Jade. So I'm gonna grab a couple of these green beans. I just harvested on them yesterday. So there's probably not that many that I need, but I know that I have a ton of tomatoes in this tomato jungle that I need to grab. Here's one thing that I did early on, just to show you on my cayenne peppers, is I tried to harvest them as they came on. And now they're putting on all these new flowers. And so hopefully we'll be getting a second rush of cayenne peppers, but I can see that there are some green beans that are ready for me. So this is how I harvest my green beans. I don't like to have to go inside and cut the tops off. So I snip the tops off when I harvest them when I'm out here. So instead of pulling the whole green bean, which keeps that top on, and then when I go inside, I have to take that off. I just snap that while I'm out here and I let that just compost in the bed. Now I'm on the back side of this bed and it may look like a jungle and there's not much in there, but there are a ton of tomatoes. Those orange tomatoes that I just harvested are Dr. Witchies, and I think those are probably my all-time favorite tomato. They are one of the most prolific tomato in my garden, and they're very dense. They have hardly any seeds, and they are the perfect sandwich slicing tomato. So all these tomatoes is just from eight plants. We have Paul Robinson and Dr. Witchies. This is all just from four plants and there is a lot more where that came from. This is just the first of probably two or three harvests. <laughs> we have already harvested a lot and we're only on the first bed. Now, not all the beds have stuff to harvest, like this bed doesn't. This isn't going to have one to harvest for a while. This is our Atlantic giant pumpkin. These have already stopped growing. So these are the variety of pumpkins that can get like 2,500 pounds. Mine are probably 45 or so pounds. I will weigh them. They're oranging, so they're already stopped growing. But I am so excited about these pumpkins. This I'll decorate my front porch with them this year. I've got one more in here. This one's pretty teeny tiny. There's another bumblebee taking a nap. And then I've got some sweet meat pumpkins in here. This one I just noticed is cracking. So I need to take this one off the vine so that the plant just stops putting any energy to it and let that compost so it can put energy to this one. In here we have some banana pumpkins, which is really exciting. And then I did not realize I had some butternut squash in here as well. So that's kind of fun. And then we have one more banana pumpkin here. And there are two of them, one here and one there that are growing. And over here are melons. And I don't see any melons yet on these plants. Oh, there's one little itty bitty teeny tiny one. Oh, I see a couple small ones over here. I 
I've never grown melons before. These zinnias are beautiful. I've never been a big fan of orange. Orange is not my favorite color, but these zinnias I am so drawn to. They're almost like a sunset because they're really dark at the top and lighter on the side. So I've been harvesting bouquets a ton. These melons I'm just gonna let grow. Oh my goodness, here is a little melon here. And then we've got onions in here that are starting to put some size on, which is really awesome. These are radishes. I'm gonna harvest the radish seeds. We have another sleeping bumblebee and more radish seeds. I follow a guy on Instagram who's growing or trying to grow a record-breaking pumpkin. <laughs> and it's just funny because his is beautiful and I'm watching all the things that I'm doing wrong with it. But even though my pumpkin is not gonna be anywhere near record-breaking, it's probably gonna be the biggest pumpkin I've ever grown, which is pretty awesome. So this bed is something that I'm going to tackle this coming week. It was too hot this week to come up out here and do any real projects. That's why you're gonna see some of the things you're gonna see. But this following week, we've got a lot of garden kind of update, taking care of maintenance type things. I need to totally rework this bed except for this one plant. This is growing a sweet meat pumpkin in here and this lettuce. We, this is our second round of lettuce. And so we've been having BLTs with this lettuce. I'm so glad I planted it. The cabbage in here is a total fail. It just needs to be ripped up and the sugar snap peas i mean there's actually a couple in here that are probably still good have a morning snack i haven't had breakfast yet mm, these are good so this bed isn't the most beautiful anymore because the sugar snap peas are completely done so i need to come out and take all that out i need to take out all of these cabbages and just start over this squash is an italian striped zucchini it's still doing really well, so I don't need to take this out, but I need to rework the whole backside. This is a weed that's about to go to flower. Let me get that out of here. From this bed, we have this bed. This is our carrots and onions, and the onions are starting to bulb up, which is really exciting. The carrots are not ready. I did pull a couple carrots. Looks like we've got a white zucchini we need to harvest but the carrots are looking great. This onion is going to flower, so I'm actually gonna harvest this onion right now, and we'll eat this fresh. But everything is looking really good in here. Once an onion flowers, then it's not gonna store at all for any length of time. So I will just cook this up for dinner tonight. I'm gonna to be making dinner tonight. So I'll just plop that there and let that <laughs> compost there. But our little, yellow pumpkins are doing really well and I, I i'm excited to talk to you about that it's a little disappointing but it is what it is these little pumpkins that i'm growing are looking really good i think i have about six of these orange ones my ant issue seems to have resolved itself because i'm having a ton of bumblebees in the garden that's not an issue anymore so i don't know what happened but now the bumblebees are in the garden and i'm happy about it this was the bed we were just in. We're gonna come over here and this is starting to look like a little bit of a jungle, but I think it's beautiful. We have more radishes that I'm gonna collect the seeds. We have more carrots and onions that just need to sit here and keep growing. We have this pumpkin. I don't know what kind of pumpkin this is, but there's a big pumpkin there and I'm gonna let that grow. We've got our first set of seeds I think that we can harvest. Um, Let's see, oh yeah. These are the, what are these called? cosmos and they have started to go to seed and i need to come in here actually this week and just chop them down mow them down because they have gotten out of control they've been super fun to grow one of my new favorite flowers and i have to say the bumblebees there's another bumblebee napping have loved these flowers so if you need a pollinator in your garden i would highly recommend these now look up here do you see that up there these are our sunflower Steve sunflowers. I planted them very heavily so that they would, well, let's see, not get as tall and they are all starting to bloom. This is my second succession of these sunflowers. I've got some more that are a little bit more farther along and then some that are about to mature. From our sunflowers, we have one more butternut squash in this bed, and there's a couple butternut squash growing, so that's exciting. Now this bed over here is one <laughs> that 
I was so excited about. Oh my goodness. Look at that. I was so excited about this corn and then it tasseled. Last time we were in the garden, it had just started tasseling. And I realized there's no corn on these cobs. There's no actual corn. And that's the first one I see. I see a little one here. I see a little one here. So maybe we're gonna get corn. So all that to say is that I was excited about this and then I was purely disappointed because I didn't see any corn on the cob. And then maybe we are gonna get corn on the cob. We also had a windstorm and it knocked over a ton of the corn. I have been feeding this with fertilizer. You can see that's some of Josh's irrigation stuff. He's still working on the irrigation, but it knocked over a bunch of it. So I was thinking, okay, oh my goodness. Okay, so there's one here too. I mean, it's little, I don't, I've never had corn get to this state before where it's this big and this tall and this everything. So I don't really know how the normal growth of it happens. If it, you know, gets the tassels on the top and then the, the corn forms, I'm not really sure, but we're just gonna see whether or not, whatever happens with this, I'm still going to the farmer's market this weekend and I'm gonna pick up 125 ears of corn. Last year, I put up 95 ears of corn and we ate it all, I think we ate the last one in March. And so we need to get a couple more, so I'm thinking 125 and maybe these will produce something. So that's all really that's in this bed other than some zinnias. Over here, we have more herbs, a ton of different types of kale. This is a Brussels sprout. And then we have just some more winter squash. It looks like one pollinated right there. And we've got some melons. Now this is a different variety melon. This is an early moonbeam melon. And I've got a couple on the other side of this garden bed. Oh my goodness, this one is pretty good size. That's probably the size of a softball. Oh my goodness. This is another variety of melon. I have three varieties of melons. I think these are the Kajari melons. We've got these here. And then on this side, I mean, we've got these beautiful zinnias. These are the queen line salmon, I think, color. We've got a ton of melons over here. We've got a, some, a winter squash, another winter squash and more herbs on the end of this bed. A lot of this kale, Josh and I have had as much as we want of kale, but I've been giving a lot of it to the chickens, so that's been super fun to be able to grow a bunch of greens for them to keep them nice and healthy. Up here, I just harvested a ton of poblano peppers yesterday because I wanted the plant to start focusing on all of these new blossoms, and I wanna see if I can get some more peppers before the end of the year is out. So there's no peppers on these plants because I just picked them all off and hopefully we can get some more growth. These are the Chinese five color peppers. I'm only harvesting them once they turn red. So I'm gonna give these a couple more days and then I'll pick these. And it looks like we've got a lot of tomatoes in this bed I need to grab right now. I did not realize how big some of these tomatoes are. These tomatoes are beautiful and I am so proud of this tomato harvest. I mean, any harvest I'm proud of, but one thing that I think is so cool about this year is I was able to start all of these tomatoes from seed and all the peppers from seed as well. And so it's just a huge accomplishment. I've been working on this skill for a long time. I've got a long way to go, but I've made some huge progress. From here, we're just gonna go straight across and we've got another tomato and pepper bed. I've got onions along the front side of this bed and they're doing okay. And then I have cannellini beans in here 
intermixed around the peppers and the cannellini beans are just starting to do something. The first two beds that we were in, the tomato plants look super lush and beautiful. This bed, the tomato plants look okay till they get to down here. And then the plants themselves are looking a little bit kind of sad. Now I've still harvested a ton of tomatoes off these and I still have more to harvest. But as we get down here, throughout the garden, the tomato plants don't look quite as good. I'm not sure exactly why, but we're still getting tomatoes, so that's what's important. So here are the cannellini beans, and these are a drying bean, so I'm just gonna let these grow until they produce and dry out. I need to grab some of these tomatoes. We've got these teeny tiny jalapenos, and then those are a longer style jalapeno down here. So from this bed, we'll go down to this bed. This is mostly a cabbage bed, and I really need to there's some really good things happening and then there's some kind of meh stuff happening. I did not realize how beautiful and ready this cabbage is and this one. I need to get this one and peel off some of these outer leaves so that it doesn't go bad. But these are rock solid and ready to be harvested. These, I just need to start over. <laughs> these cabbages didn't do much. This was a cabbage I harvested. And when you harvest a cabbage, it'll start forming these little cabbages. That cabbage split, so that will go to the chickens. These are almost ready to harvest. You can see here, here's a better example. When you harvest a cabbage, if you don't, if you keep the plant alive, it's trying to form more cabbages. So there's like one, two, three, four, five little mini cabbages here. These onions are looking beautiful. This is our second succession of carrots and it looks beautiful here. And then I need to get some of this parsley in the freeze dryer. fun. I was not expecting to harvest any cabbages today. So let's go down to this next bed. This next bed is kind of fun. This is another thing that I need to deal with this coming week. These snow peas are just completely done. <laughs> the 100 plus degree weather just toasted those. The Rebecca is looking beautiful. The straw flowers are looking beautiful. And this is the second succession of cucumbers I planted and zucchini and it looks like there's some things that need to be harvested in here. We've got a lot of basil. So one thing, I think I planted about 12 zucchini plants because last year <laughs> I planted, I think six, and I think I got two or three zucchinis my entire, out of my whole garden. This year I've gotten a crazy amount of zucchini. I have gifted so much zucchini to anybody and everybody in my family and life that wants zucchini. They are getting zucchini. So I don't think I'm gonna plant this much zucchini next year, but I am grateful for a bumper crop because last year was such a sad crop. It's pretty traditional to grow cucumbers up a trellis, but I am growing these cucumbers down, the ba down along my bed and it seems to be working pretty well. Got a cucumber right here. I kind of want them growing this way. They're trying to get to the trellis back there, but I kind of want them growing this way. So I'm coming in here and trying to get all the basil that I see. It's getting a little bit smothered by these zucchini plants, but I will get these in the freeze dryer today. I need to go get my bowl that I brought out for my herbs. I just found a few more cucumbers in these hanging plants down here. So that's working really well. I'll, I'll take note of that and maybe do that again next year if I don't have trellis space for it. This bed here, the sun's starting, starting to come out. 
This bed here is potatoes. I think my dad and I probably this, this week or next week, we're gonna harvest all the potatoes. These are sunflowers that I randomly planted in here. And I don't know if they're gonna bloom by the time we need to harvest these potatoes. We'll see, they're kind of short and they're just coming on their bud. So they should bloom in the next few days, hopefully. So I hope to see, I wanted them planted really close together in these potatoes so that they would be short and stunted and we could see some beautiful blooms. So we'll see how that goes. So here's a top down view of the potato and sunflower patch. That would be really pretty. We'll just see how this next week goes if we get to the potatoes. These potatoes haven't died back as much as the potatoes in the bed we're gonna look at in just a minute. From this bed, we have one of my absolute favorite beds right across. I'm absolutely loving this thing. There are so many pumpkins in this one bed. We have this one huge Cinderella pumpkin. We've got another Cinderella pumpkin here. This is the one we pollinated together. And then in this jungle, which I'm loving the jungle, not only do we have these zinnias that are popping up out of the top, which is what I wanted. I wanted the zinnias to kind of come up from where the pumpkin plants are, but there are about six really large pumpkins in here. They're green, so you can't really see them very well. I'll show you. I was out here the other day harvesting celery and I kept finding, I've got to walk very gingerly so I don't step on the stem. Of, this is our one of our white squash and it has powdery mildew and I have not done anything to try to save that plant. I think what I'm gonna do is after today and I harvest all these white zucchinis, I think I'm gonna pull these out because I don't want it to start affecting my other plants, but I've gotten enough white zucchini <laughs> off this plant that I don't need it to continue to grow. But on this side of the bed, there are, there are more pumpkins, so many pumpkins. We have a pumpkin there. There's three pumpkins here. There's a pumpkin right there. And I think that's it. But I am just thrilled with how many pumpkins. Looks like it's trying to put on one more pumpkin. Oh, two more pumpkins. This white long zucchini has probably been the most prolific zucchini I've ever grown. Pumpkins are one of my absolute favorite things to grow. I'm probably going to try to grow more pumpkins next year. These white zucchinis, I thought they were white pumpkins I was growing. I've never grown white pumpkins before and I are never grown white. I've grown little tiny white pumpkins, but I've never grown big white pumpkins before. So I was hoping those were gonna be flat stacker style pumpkins. They were zucchini. So next year, I'm probably gonna do two beds that look like this because I, it just brings me so much joy. Back to this bed that we were talking about earlier. It does look like there's some green beans in here that are ready to harvest. These are jade green beans and these are probably my new favorite. They're a darker green than the contender green bean and they seem to keep their tenderness a little bit better. So I think I'm gonna plant more of these next year. And then I've got a ton of Roma tomatoes in here that need to be harvested. You can see that from harvesting the celery, the other day, we're already starting to get some celery growth on those. Here you can see the jade green beans a little bit better. They just don't seem to get as tough as the contender. So I think, I think that these have now won out as my favorite. I just did a really big harvest on these Roma tomatoes the other day. But I can already see, oh my gosh, there are so many that are totally ripe and ready for harvest. I was about to say I'm not gonna harvest any of these because I just did that really big harvest, but I think I need to because I don't want these to go bad on the vine. So I'm gonna take a second. I might as well go through all these green bean plants too, get all the Romas that are ready and bring them inside so they don't go to waste or go bad on the vine because they get too overripe out here. I like to be able to protect them inside.
I had to go inside and get some more coffee. I didn't quite realize how much was out here. It's awesome. I do have a harvest apron. I just have not pulled it out from storage yet and I need to because I've got, every time I come out to the garden, there's so much more than I anticipate and that is such a huge blessing. So I really need to get that harvest apron out of storage. When I went inside, I probably should have grabbed another basket, but I didn't, so I'll come back out in just a minute to grab those. So over here, we have our cilantro that is going to seed, so it's turning into coriander. I was gonna pull that out, but I think I'm just gonna leave it. This is a fun bed in here. So these cucumber plants, I kind of gave up on because I planted them, and for six weeks or so, they didn't grow more than this big. So I thought, okay, I'm not getting any cucumbers for those plants. That's why I planted a second succession of them over there. And now they're starting to produce. I just picked three cucumbers. Now this is kind of fun. This is a success slash, not failure. It's a success. I think the seed that I got was not the best. This whole bed was cabbage and then we replanted it together and we replanted it with some Blue Lake bush beans. And these are just starting to put on beans not ready to harvest yet but i'm excited about that we planted some sunflowers and carrots and this right here these are pinto beans and you can see they're starting to put some pinto beans on here these are a drying bean i've got some blackberries i need to pull out the one thing i have struggled with weeds in this garden so far the most are blackberries i'm trying to pull it out i don't have gloves on so it kind of hurts but they grow in between you can probably see right there the beds and so it's something that i come out here very regularly i'm just going to set that there for now let that dry out and then i'll throw that in the woods but i've been struggling with those back to these pinto beans look how beautiful that is i just got distracted by those tomatoes so these pinto beans let's get back to them from where the carrots are over i had planted probably 40 plants and only four of them came up there's one here 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 and here so I think my seed was bad. We came back out together and we replanted it and still none of them germinated. So I think the seed was not good, but these are a pole bean variety. I had called the seed company. I ordered these from Azure and they're a different company that sells the actual seeds. They're not Azure seeds. They get seeds from some company and then sell those. And I had called the company because it didn't say on the package whether they were pole beans or bush beans. The lady didn't know. She said, I think they're bush beans. They are not bush beans. They are definitely pole beans, which is good to know because I wanna save these seeds and I can plan for that next year if I plant these next year. I'm gonna to try to train them to grow up this trellis here. So we'll see if that works. My goal next year is to plant a lot more drying beans, a lot more crops that you plant once and you don't have to manage it that often. So. That's just something I've been thinking about. I'm not a gardener who plans a ton, but I already have so many ideas for next year. I'm really looking forward to next year because I'm gonna be a lot more, I say that now. My plan is to be a lot more planned out and methodical about my garden. Now here we have more peppers. I have harvested all the, mostly all the peppers, again from these pepper plants in the front so that hopefully we'll get a second flush of peppers. This bed looks a little bit sad, but it is still productive even though it looks a little bit sad. I do need to come these tomatoes, that tomato plant has fallen over, but these tomato plants just are not as thriving as the tomatoes that I have at the other end of the garden. But still, there's I don't know, maybe 20 tomatoes that I need to grab today. So even though they're not thriving, they're still producing. Now this bed some of my garden has just been a roller coaster of emotion and I feel like that is it's like that every year these are black beans that a one of you all sent me in my p.o box and I planted them they looked awful they looked terrible I fertilized them just like I fertilized the peppers and they're looking really good now 
and something else that's really exciting are these Tabasco peppers. I have been trying to grow Tabasco peppers for four years now. This is my fourth year trying to grow them and this is the first year I have peppers on my plants. These are the black beans. Now this is definitely a different variety of black beans than the black beans that I have planted down below that I'll show you in just a minute because the leaves are completely different, but they're starting to thrive. And these are a pole bean variety, which I didn't know until they started growing. I started watching Living Traditions Homestead maybe seven years ago. It was right when they first started. And one year, this was probably, this was when we, Josh and I lived in our first house. So this was probably six years ago. Before I had a garden, this was kind of what helped plant the seed that I wanted a garden, was they had grown Tabasco peppers and they grew these huge plants. So big that they said they only ever need to plant one Tabasco pepper plant to have enough Tabasco peppers. And here I have been struggling for the last four years. Ever since I saw them grow Tabasco peppers, I thought, you know what? I want Tabasco peppers in my garden. Well, I have not been able to, to get Tabasco peppers to grow until this year. Now these don't look anywhere near the size of the plants that they grew. They grew these massive plants. They were huge and mine are small and little, but even if I get a little harvest, that's going to be better than no harvest because I have yet to harvest one Tabasco pepper, even though I've tried four years in a row. Persistence, persistence, persistence. <laughs> don't give up. Oh, there's one more. Oh, corn. I've tried growing corn four years in a row and I'm looking at that and I'm like, am I going to get corn? It looks better than any corn I've ever grown, even though it's kind of fallen over. But I don't know if I am going to get a corn harvest off that. Am I going to try planting corn again next year? Probably. <laughs> I know I can buy corn from a local farmer, but I would really like to try to grow it myself. Not because... I think that we could sustain life off the corn that I could try to grow in my garden. Clearly not because I haven't been able to grow it with any sort of harvest in the last four years. But there's something about just keep trying, keep trying. And then the feeling of if I'm ever going to get a harvest, that's going to be a pretty exciting feeling. So one thing though that I have been able to grow this year is zucchini. We are back at the zucchini bed. This is the one that we have a lot of zucchini that I need to harvest. There are some cucumbers I can see I need to harvest over here. Now, we just had 105-ish degree weather and look at this cilantro. It has not bolted because it is on the north side of the zucchini plants. It has been in the shade, which has been incredible. So I'm actually gonna harvest a bunch of that. I'm making a Mexican style dish tonight for dinner. So we're gonna have that. And there are a ton of zucchinis in here that I need to harvest. My sunflower, Steve's sunflowers have bloomed. Some of them are actually almost done. Like this one is, look at this. <laughs> oh my goodness. This one is almost done. It's going to seed. I am gonna save these seeds. And this one has a bunch of side shoots. I thought that the sunflower steves were pro cut, which means they only put on one, yeah, it's going to seed, one shoot, one flower head. You can see where I just took those petals. There are seeds in there. So I'm not going to harvest this yet. I'm just going to let that sit on there. But you can see all these side shoots. So that's going to be really fun to see. So I want to definitely save that because I like the side shoots because that's really pretty. Our white pumpkins are coming along. I think I have about six or seven of them now, which is amazing. And then I have a ton of squash in here I need to get, which I will get in just a little bit. But that is this bed and it looks like there's some big ones in here. From this zucchini sunflower bed, we moved down here to the black bean bed. Oh my goodness, friends, we are going to get a black bean harvest, I think, this year, as long as everything goes well. Now, what I've noticed is the last couple days, they have not put any more blossoms on. So I think all the beans that are going to be on these plants are already on the plants. And I can just show you, you see all these beans? There are so many. I mean, this thing is just loaded with beans. I love a crop like this. 
because you plant them once and as long as deer don't keep eating them like they did last year you really don't have to do anything to them i did fertilize them a few times because they needed a good boost of fertilizer but just like black beans and squash winter squash you plant it and forget it which i love just like this too this is our last raised bed in the garden we have more potatoes these potatoes are telling me they are ready to harvest. They're dying back quite a bit, which is a sign that they are ready to be harvested. But I'm waiting for a time when my dad can come and help me. Now, this is kind of interesting. This right here is a sweet potato, which I did not plant this sweet potato. This looks like a, some lettuce, which I did not plant here. And that is a black bean, I think. That sweet potato happened because I had purchased some sweet potatoes for my flower pots up on my patio just because the, the foliage is pretty and I wanted that look in my flower pots. And I thought that one died, so I just threw it here and clearly it didn't die. So I'm going to dig that up. When my flowers are done for the year two up on my patio, I'm gonna dig it up and see if it produces anything. Now they are like an, I bought them as an ornamental thing, but I don't know if they actually grow a sweet potato or not. So it'll be kind of fun to see. And we have more sleeping bumblebees on the zinnias. Now this is a really pretty color zinnia too. It's really bright orange and I'm liking it. Even though orange is not my favorite color, I really like this color flower. And then one other cool thing is I had a couple volunteer sunflowers in here and this one's going to seed. And I'll harvest those seeds in a little bit. Now that I've gone through the whole garden, I've assessed everything, I've kind of got a plan what I need to do moving forward for the next week, or I think I have a plan. Now that I'm in the next week, I realize that <laughs> I don't really have time necessarily to turn over all these beds. I really need to deal with all this produce. So as much as I want to get out there and rip out everything that is kind of dead and not as aesthetically beautiful, I have to prioritize preserving all of this goodness. Now, this garden has produced more abundance than I ever anticipated, especially for the first year. If you're with me at the beginning of the year, I was thinking, oh my goodness, I don't know if we're going to get anything. I don't know if there is enough nutrients in the soil, but just give it time and the abundance has been more than I could anticipate. So I have been able to gift a lot of this produce away to friends and family, and Josh and I have been eating it fresh. I have had to do no grocery shopping for produce in the last two and a half months, and I also have enough to preserve up for Josh and I to be able to enjoy this harvest throughout this next year. So my goal when I was out here with you and I was thinking as I was walking through the garden was to spend the next week turning over some of the beds, but what really has to take priority is preserving all of this stuff. So if you enjoy food preservation and you are new around here, please consider subscribing because we are going to be dealing with all of this abundance in some pretty fun and new ways that I have never preserved before. So a couple of the things we're going to do is we are going to make tomato prosciutto. I think we already did that together. We are gonna to make tomato jam. We're gonna do diced tomatoes. We're gonna to make tomato sauce. We are going to do all of these amazing, beautiful things with this produce. So I'm just blown away. Now these Roma tomatoes, I only have 11 Roma tomatoes in this bed and I could probably grow a year's worth of tomato sauce just from these 11 tomato plants. I got these from MI Gardener. I can link those seeds down below. Here is the harvest, two red cabbages, a ton of zucchini and summer squash, a ton of basil and parsley, probably 50 pounds of tomatoes, tons of cucumbers, didn't harvest that yet. There's a ton of peppers in here, green beans, an onion and a bunch more cucumbers.
to say I have my work cut out for me, I think is an understatement. I did not realize just how abundant this garden was gonna be its first year. It was a little bit of a rocky start, but it didn't take long before just things started exploding. This is probably the only thing I'm gonna deal with right now today. I'm gonna to wash this basil and parsley up and I'm gonna get this in the freeze dryer. And then I am gonna package up a couple different goodies packages for some of my friends and family to donate some of these produce items to them just so that they can share in the abundance for all the support they have given me when it came to getting this garden where it is today. So I'm just grateful for that. And then I do have a ton of plans. Well, obviously we're gonna be eating a ton of this fresh, but I've got a ton of plans for these tomatoes. I'm gonna to do two new things this year that I've never done before with tomatoes. I'm gonna to make tomato jam and that'll probably be next week and I want to do diced tomatoes. I've never jarred up diced tomatoes before. In the refrigerator, I've got a ton of peppers in the refrigerator that need to be processed. And then I've got all these tomatoes, plus the tomatoes that I've been harvesting that are ripe, that we're not eating fresh, that I haven't already put in jars or anything like that, I've been throwing in the freezer. So this is an abundant year. So this abundance is incredible. So if you are new around here, please consider subscribing because I will show you what I'm gonna do with all of this other than you know, what we're gonna eat fresh and what I'm gonna to gift to some friends and family. And obviously I said I was gonna harvest some seeds today. I did not get to that. I think that I was needing to focus on this and then when I go out there, I will go out there with the mindset of I'm just gonna go out here and try to harvest seed. And then we've got a lot of maintenance stuff we have got to deal with out there. Today is not the day for that. Next week, I will go out there and we will turn over some beds for some fall crops. We'll harvest some potatoes and get those two beds ready for fall planting. And then we will clean up some of the beds that just need to be cleaned up. Today is Friday, tomorrow is Saturday, and I'm gonna be heading to the farmer's market and buying about 150-ish ears of corn. And so if you are interested in seeing this journey, please join me for that, because that's gonna be so fun. This time of year is beautiful, it's abundant, it's overwhelming, but it's a good time of year. So thank you for being here. I'll pop some of my other videos here. If you wanna see what I do with all this type of produce, I can put a playlist here. And I just thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.